We are asked here to show whether a uh, certain transformation from the set of all polynomials with degree 2 or lower mapped to the set of two-dimensional vectors in R2 um, is a linear transformation. So remember, uh, to show that it's a linear transformation, we, we should first take uh, two just generic elements of P2. So let's um, let P1 and P2 to 2. Try that again. Uh, be vectors in P2. And I guess we put the word vectors here in quotations. It's not the way we normally think of, of vectors because P1 and P2 are both going to be quadratic polynomials or um, polynomials of, of degree one or sorry, two or lower. Um, okay, but so we've got these two polynomials, P1 and P2, degree two or lower. Um, now, we need to check on whether t of p1 plus p2 is equal to t of p1 plus t of p2. So that would be the first condition uh, to t being a linear transformation. Okay, but so according to the instructions we're given for this particular transformation, t of the polynomial p1 plus p2 would be uh, the two-dimensional vector whose first component would be that polynomial p1 plus p2 evaluated at zero. And the second component would actually be the exact same thing. Um, the polynomial p1 plus p2 evaluated at zero. Okay, but just um, by virtue of the way this, this function addition works, uh, p1 plus p2 evaluated at zero is equal to p1 evaluated at 0 plus p2 evaluated at 0. So the first and second entries can be rewritten that way. That's just always the way we add functions. But then this could be separated into two separate vectors, where the first vector is p1 of 0, p1 of 0. And the second vector is p2 of 0, p2 of 0. And this, uh, this vector whose components are p1 of 0, p1 of 0, that's t of polynomial p1. And similarly, the second vector whose components are p2 of 0, p2 of 0, that's the transformation of the polynomial p2. And this is the first um, condition to t being a linear transformation. If we do the transformation to this sum of polynomials, is that equal to the transformation applied to the first one plus the transformation applied to the second one? And here we've shown that it is. So now we need to check the second condition. And that's whether t of a scalar c times polynomial p1, we're hoping that this is equal to c times t of p1. That's what we're out to prove. If we can prove this, then uh, we've shown that t is a linear transformation. But okay, so let's think about this step by step. T of C times P1. So the way this transformation works, we're thinking of this as a new polynomial, like seven times our original polynomial. So that would just be, take the, the polynomial, evaluate at zero. Same thing down here. Take the polynomial, C of P1, evaluate at zero. So that's the way that this transformation was defined. Well, we could pull out that scalar C then and then we're left with p1 of 0, p1 of 0. But that, again, that's the transformation applied to the polynomial p1. We've got the c out front. I almost skipped it. So we've got c times the transformation applied to the polynomial p1. Now, this is exactly where we wanted to end up. So we've shown that with scalar multiplication, uh, the transformation of a scalar times a polynomial is equal to the scalar times the transformed polynomial and the transformation of a sum of two polynomials is equal to the transformation of each of those, the sum of the transformations of each of those polynomials. So we have shown that T is a linear transformation.